Welcome to Journeys Through Sociology, a series of interviews with the Executive Committee of the International Sociological Association. I'm Lalebe Bohanyan, and our guest today is Dr. Ishwar Modi, who is joining us from Jaipur, India. Dr. Modi earned his PhD in social sciences from the University of Rajasthan, Jaipur, where he then went on to teach for almost 30 years. Dr. Modi has been at the forefront of developing leisure studies in India. He founded and directed the Center for Leisure and Tourism Studies at the University of Rajasthan, and he's also served as the president of the ISA's Research Committee on the Sociology of Leisure. In addition to his work on leisure and tourism, he's also conducted major research projects on a range of other issues, including drug abuse and adult literacy. And Dr. Modi has served as the president of the Rajasthan Sociological Association, as well as the secretary of the Indian Sociological Association. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Modi. Thank you very much. A pleasure talking to you and seeing you on the screen. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, so I'm very fine. And Dr. Modi, there's a number of questions I'd like to ask you today, and and to get a you know a bit of a sense of of your history and sociology. Um, but perhaps we could start with the present. If you could just you know tell us a bit about the work that you're currently doing, some aspect of your work that you're particularly excited about right now. Lalit, the thing about which I am most excited right now is the building of the ISA RC13, Sociology of Leisure. Mm -hmm. Because when I joined this research committee, it was long back, but in 19, 2006, in the Durban Congress of ISA, the number of uh, the members of the research committee on leisure had come down to almost 36. Mm -hmm. And it was a big challenge for everybody in the, in the committee. So the past three presidents thought it proper that let Ishwar be the president and maybe his efforts would strengthen the committee. And I'm very happy to tell you that the second, first ISA Forum of Sociology in Barcelona came very handy to us and given our cumulative efforts, we could increase its strength to 100 members next uh, one and a half years time. Mm. And we had a uh, number of uh, I mean, a large number of joint sessions of the research committees of ISA. And then again in Gothenburg, we had 16 joint sessions of uh, our research committee. Mm. And now our strength is 200 plus. And as such, now we are one of the larger committees of ISA. And that gives me a lot of satisfaction. So, Dr. Modi, uh, you know, for, for those who may not be familiar with sociology of leisure, um, can you just tell us a bit about, you know, what are the kinds of issues that, that sociologists of leisure are particularly interested in, or what are some of the, the issues that you've worked on in India, perhaps? I would like to mention that we treat uh, leisure as an umbrella category, which takes care and encompasses many areas of life. Now, I mean, leisure industry, as on today, is one of the third largest industry in the world. It takes care of tourism, it takes care of sports, it takes care of uh, museums, it takes care of many cultural activities, and what not virtually, I would like to say. Virtually, life is leisure, and uh, one can look for through leisure, you know. If you really want to understand uh, the life of the people, it's better that you go into the leisure lives of the people and that, give you, that will give you a much better idea about their lives, you know. Yes. So we had been working and now we have our presentation, I mean, presence in more than 40 countries of the world. And more than that, I'm really very excited to tell you that I'm working on a book project and which will soon be published. We're already in conversation with sales people and it will have 40 papers from as many continent, I mean, as many countries and five continents. And this is going to be a sort of a reference book, and I hope it, is, it will be a sort of reference book for quite a few generations to come. So this is a reference book on, on leisure with 40 papers from different nations on, on the subject of sociology of leisure. Right. Excellent. And besides that, in my interest in leisure, I'd always been interested in the tourism studies. And I was the vice president of the Committee on Tourism during 2006-2010. I was elected vice president in Durban. 
and I also had the opportunity to organize the midterm conference of uh, ISARC 50, International Tourism. Mm -hmm. And because at that time I was a visiting faculty professor at the Indian Institute of Health Management Research, I also thought it proper to organize a conference on health issues in India. Mm -hmm. And we had a midterm conference of ISARC 15, a sociology of health in India in Jaipur in 2009. Mm -hmm. Prior to my become president of the Research Committee on Leisure, uh, we were not holding the midterm conferences very regularly. But fortunately, after that, we met in Barcelona. Then we had a midterm conference in Beijing in China in 2009. And then, of course, we met in Gothenburg. And this on two months back, September end, we met in, we met in uh, Palermo, Italy. And we already have an offer to meet in Hungary in 2013. Mm -hmm. And we already have an offer to meet in 2015 after the Yokohama Congress. So I think uh, our research committee is doing very well and I have every reason to feel satisfied and happy that we had been able to build our research committee to a very great extent. Yes, yes. So, so Dr. Modi, <coughs> actually, I, I'd like now maybe to step back a little bit and, and get a sense of, you know, your own history in sociology and, and what drew you to the study of sociology in the first place. So, you know, when you look back over, over your career, could you perhaps, you know, maybe identify for us three major reasons why you've been drawn to sociology? Uh, in fact, I did my undergraduate course in social sciences. I had economics, I had political science and sociology. But I really felt enamored by sociology from day one, and I was almost determined to do my master's in sociology. Though I had the option to do my master's in economics or in political science, but I thought, no, I would fit in better, and I would do better in sociology. And another reason was that when I joined the university, the department was created only a year back. I passed out in 1962, the Department of Sociology at the University of Rajasthan was established in 1961. Mm. So I thought being a new department, I have ample opportunity to grow in the department. Mm. And besides that, we had very three eminent uh, professors who had joined the department and everybody spoke very highly about them. Mm. And in fact, uh, out of this term, it, I worked for my PhD with one of them, Professor Yogen Singh, who then was, who moved to Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi which is one of the top institutes in the country, and then he also became president of the Indian Sociological Society. So, so in Dr. Fact, Modi, I mean, since, since the Department of Sociology had just been established, you know, what was it that, that made you feel that sociology was a field that, that, that interested you? You know, what was it about the discipline of sociology that, that made you yes, feel that I way? Would, very, very good question, I would say. In fact, uh, in 1962, the India had attained independence in 1947 from the British. Mm -hmm. And the whole country was concerned with the development of the society. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the social scientists were very sought after people, including the sociologists, and in all the planning boards and bodies of the central government, of the regional governments, the state governments, they were inducted into the planning boards and planning committees. Mm -hmm. And they were playing a substantial role in the reconstruction and development of the society. Mm -hmm. And I thought that if I become a sociologist, maybe I'm also able to contribute something to this process of uh, development and social development in India, which was, of course, very badly required. Yes, yes. So that's another reason of my joining uh, sociology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Modi, can you also, another question that, that we've been asking of, of the various ISA members that we've done interviews with is also, what kind of challenges have you faced as a sociologist? And, and you know, different people have, have brought up very different issues from different parts of the world. But I would be interested in knowing in your own kind of career as a sociologist, are there particular challenges that you face? No, I think uh, we have had uh, many problems and many challenges virtually uh, because uh, one biggest challenge before the country is that uh, we are not getting good students now because they are going to the kind of courses which are market driven, like mm -hmm. management courses. Mm -hmm. And as such, the quality of the students uh, is going down and we are not getting the brighter and the brightest people uh, to join sociology. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that ultimately is going to tell on the quality of the teachers also. Because then we will not have the same kind of good faculties which will emerge out of good students. Mm -hmm. So it's another challenge. I mean, we are not getting very bright and brightest students in sociology. Then second is that uh, we, are not, we will not produce as good faculties as we were producing earlier in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's a big challenge for all of us. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that uh, we still do not have good number of journals in the country. I mean, you don't I have mean, a good number of journals, of sociology journals. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we do not have many. Because in fact, uh, uh, if you ask me at the personal level, um, you know, I mean, there are some of the challenges, I would say rather. But if you ask me personal question, mm -hmm. that what are the kind of problems which I faced uh, uh, by joining sociology, I would like to say that the first problem was language. Mm -hmm. Because until my undergraduate course, I had my medium as Hindi. And I very soon realized that if I have to stay in the profession, uh, I must do something to improve my English. And uh, if you are not good in English, uh, you will not be considered a good, reputed uh, sociologist or any academics. Mm -hmm. So I had to struggle hard to grapple with English, learn it, and then start writing in English. And that took me quite some time, because mm -hmm. I would not be in a position to read the original English text. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, good translations were also not available in Hindi. Mm -hmm. so that was another major problem uh, which a new student or one, one who wants to grow in sociology would face uh, in the country. And is this, does this continue to be a problem? Is this, do you think that there's still this situation of a, a lack of journals for sociologists in India? Journals is a big problem still because the number of journals is very, very few, which are reputed journals. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I mean, uh, while uh, in the Western universities, uh, many universities bring out their own journals, mm -hmm. but ha Indian universities do not bring out journals of their own. Mm -hmm. There are only general journals which come out in the country, mm -hmm. and the number is also very, very few. And it's very difficult to get your papers published. Uh, so that's a big problem, even today, you know. Mm -hmm. So we need to produce uh, many more journals and universities should also consider bringing out their own independent journals to promote scholarship. Mm -hmm. If we fail on this front, if we do not do it, I think we are going to face very tough time and maybe we will not be in a position to compete with the whole world. Mm -hmm. So it's even a big problem mm -hmm. that we do not have good journals. And another problem which the universities are facing is that there is a crunch of funding. Mm -hmm. the, the, the faculty sizes have shrunk a great deal. Mm -hmm. I remember distinctly that when I was in the Department of Sociology, uh, until the 90s, we had about, it was the largest department in the country. We had about 22 to 24 faculty members. And now it has shrunk to just one third of the faculty members, only seven, eight people now remain. And they have a lot of pressure of teaching there are many more new optional papers. Now, how to cope with? And as such, it has not been possible, or it is not becoming possible for them to do any research work. They're every time they're indulged and uh, in, are involved in teaching only. Mm -hmm. So you also have to devote some time to grow and to do some research. But where is the time? Mm -hmm. Each one of them is teaching about 16 to 18 hours per week. And this is quite substantial for them. Yeah. 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 So, so in, in terms of these challenges that, you, that you're bringing up, you know, the issue of journals, the issue of, of uh, you know, lack of funding or a decrease in funding for sociology departments. But the first issue you brought up was also that there's a decrease in students showing interest in sociology and, and going into the field of sociology. In the, in the case of India, do you, do you yourself ha have any ideas about how that may be addressed? Or do you think that that's simply a market-driven issue that, that students are, you know? At, the, at, at one level, this is certainly a market-driven problem. Because all over the world, many departments have been merged. They are being closed. And uh, India has not yet closed departments of sociology in the country. But the number of brighter students has reduced a lot mm -hmm. because now they are going to professional courses, to mainly to management courses, I would like to say. Mm -hmm. But then the central government had now started, recently established 15 central universities in all parts of the country. 
they have a lot of funding, they have a lot of uh, financial resources. And, uh, if, uh, but unfortunately, only a very few of these universities have uh, opened the departments of sociology, mm -hmm. only two or three, and the others are yet to open the department of sociology. Mm -hmm. I do hope that when all these universities uh, start departments of sociology, we can look forward to for better days for sociology, yeah. because they will have a lot of funding, so they will have less of teaching assignment, and they will also be able to do substantial good research, organize conferences, maybe they also produce journals, and that will certainly help in the improvement of and growth of sociology in India. Yes, yes. So, at the, Dr. Modi, actually, I would be interested for you to tell us perhaps a little bit about some of the research. I, I know that you've done research on a, a wide variety of topics, um, and we've spoken about your work on leisure and tourism, but could you maybe just share a little bit with us about some of the other research projects that, that you've been involved with over the years? Lale, I like, uh, I, I really like to work in many areas. And all aspects of life interest me a lot. Mm -hmm. I had uh, devoted some time to the study of children, some time to the study of youth. And right now, uh, we have formed a group known as BRIC Sociology. Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Mm. We already have had two meetings, one in China and one in Gothenburg. And next time we are going to meet uh, in Argentina and Buenos Aires at the time of the second ISA Forum of Sociology. Mm -hmm. But uh, already the group has completed a project on social stratification. Mm -hmm. And our next target right now is to produce uh, a comprehensive work on youth. And four or five countries will now, BRIC has become BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Mm -hmm. And all these five countries will be joining and producing their country reports on different aspects of youth. And this is another area in which uh, I am presently working. And I have involved a good number of uh, Indian colleagues to write different chapters for this project on youth. Mm -hmm. That's another area which I would like to say interests me. I already mentioned that I had been a visiting professor at the Institute of Indian Institute of Health Management Research, mm -hmm. and as such, one aspect or one area which interested me was, of course, health. Mm -hmm. Because I also had to justify myself that why I'm a professor at the Indian <laughs> Institute of Health Management Research. <laughs> so I had to diversify from leisure and tourism to the issues of health also. But of course, that's a very, very challenging area. Yes. And particularly in a developing country like India, the problems of inequality, the problems of health, the problems of sanitation, of uh, urbanization, of quality of life, are very, very important issues. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I wish that uh, sociologists contribute substantially and adjust themselves sub substantially to work in these areas so that they can contribute at their level that how can the quality of life of the Indian people can be improved. Yeah. And there are many other problems uh, because India is a huge, large big country. It has enormous population. Uh, presently about 123 crores of people in this country. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. In in next uh, 20 years' time, uh, we will overtake China in terms of population. Mm -hmm. So the urban chaos has to be addressed, how they are going to solve all these problems and what should be done. And I think sociologists can play a great role in addressing to all these problems, yeah. which we are not, in fact, very seriously doing. And that's very, very... I mean, said, I would say. So, you know, Dr. Modi, clearly you, you know, for you, your work as a sociologist has been very much about addressing the problems of India and addressing issues of inequality and, as you say, as stratification. Um, but as you look back over your career, if, if you had not become a sociologist, what, do you, what else do you think that you might have, have liked to have pursued, aside from sociology? There was no way that I would not have become a sociologist. <laughs> <laughs> I was right from my undergraduate course when I was studying sociology, political science and economics, I had made up my mind that here lies my heart and I have to pursue sociology. And if you, I mean, we in India believe in a, a sort of reincarnation. And 
if you ask me that what you would like to become even your next birth, I would say if I, I am born in the form of a human being, I would again like to become a sociologist and a university teacher because sociology has so much to offer in terms of diversity of areas and sub areas of interest which you can pursue, which no other discipline offers you. Yeah. I had been, we had been talking, I had been telling my students also that the reach of sociology is as far and wise as that of poets and literary people, mm -hmm. as they can talk of anything. They can talk of, they can talk of air, they can talk of uh, water, they can talk of sand, they can talk of anything. Mm -hmm. And likewise, sociologists can also study all these social phenomena. We can study water, we can study, I mean, land, we can study Anything that environment, the air, pollution, yeah. and even maybe someday we'll be studying moon also. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, Dr. So Modi, I, I want to thank you so much for being with us today. It's been really fascinating to have a, a chance to speak with you, and, and we really appreciate you taking the time to, to be with us. Thank you so much, Lali, that you gave me this opportunity to share some of my views with you and the community of sociologists all over. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my great pleasure to be with you. This has been another Journey Through Sociology with Dr. Ishwar Modi. We look forward to next time when we'll be joined by Dr. Yoshimichi Sato from Japan. <laughs>